the bridge right in front of us, that one right there, is the lowest bridge on the entire Canal du Midi and it is the lowest bridge that we're going to have to go through actually until for the entire trip through the canals. At that point we'll know whether we got all our calculations correct. Yeah, our only point of concern is the Bimini. We are now tied up in Carcassonne, which I believe is about halfway point on the Canal du Midi. We are tied up against the dock wall, so we've got three nights here. And those three nights um, we will go and explore, and there's lots to do and see here, so we will spend our time in Carcassonne. chilly and blustery today it's gray and windy and it's actually raining a little bit at the moment <laughs> that was just neat don't worry but unfortunately this is I mean it's June so first of all we're gonna have some slightly changeable weather I guess point being is that um, even though the weather is not ideal today we still have to go out and explore. But that's okay. Whew. Won't be needing these today. What's up with this weather? Well, do you know what? When, it, when the weather closes in, I think, you know what? We are in such an ideal place for the weather to be here for a few days. Find a lamppost and the bike. I was woken up last night by the wind. Oh, really? Yeah. I, what, did, what woke you up? Because like some a, a dull banging woke, woke me up. <laughs> uh, no, what happened was I could feel the boat mo moving, so I'm like half away thinking it might, the wind must have got up. Well, I heard the, our basil plant banging against the wood post and I got up to move it. The most middle class thing ever been said on a sailing channel. <laughs> see the flood marks on the wall there's obviously been some fairly huge floods over the last ooh, 150 years so uh, yeah the flood marks on the wall uh, 1891 or 1820 fairly amazing it must have flooded the whole city this river is the river Oud, O A U D E, and it runs parallel to the canal I think it feeds the canal it feeds the canal yes it feeds the canal <laughs> So Nick, what do we know about the fortified city, the, the ancient city? I think... Mm. <laughs> what did you tell me to repeat? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> what do we know about this place again? <laughs> Let me refer to my notes that you beat into me last night <laughs> while I was trying to sleep. It was founded 1000 years BC. It's pre-Roman. 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 Pre-Dates Romans. Yep. Um, and then as... And then obviously the Romans came and took it all over and yeah. did their thing. And as we saw with uh, Tarragona, then the medieval it, people build and continue to build on Roman settlements. Yeah. Because geographically, the uh, the terrain favours castles on high points. And then it actually kind of fell completely into uh, disarray. It was um, like, like abandoned. Drawer, like your underpant drawer. <laughs> <laughs> My underpant drawer. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's perfectly arrayed. But no, it was abandoned. The city was completely abandoned. It was just left to fall into ruin. And then in the 19th century, they were actually going to demolish the entire city, believe it or not. And the public were like, please don't demolish an ancient city. Like, <laughs> that would be a terrible idea. So the government, the French government, decided to, um, what do they call it when, like, they... A reno. A, a reno. <laughs> a reno job. <laughs> a restoration. They did a complete restoration. And apparently it's... it's not a hundred percent authentic. Yeah, it looks extremely impressive from this vantage point, <clears throat> and I can't wait to go and have a look. So you can already see that the ages of it. Yeah, where the restoration is taking place. It's obviously quite new, and then you go up. And obviously, this section is part of the restored wall. Not the most sympathetic restoration. No, I did read that. that I mean, that's concrete. 
They've actually done that with Yeah. It's not stone. It's not no. No. Yeah, I think you have to look at it as a whole rather than the detail. That's too short to get it all right. First time around, you better not mess up. Your eyes shot, you have to do something. You have to either walk or you it just like. <laughs> so, Cassoulet. I think Nick's gonna have the cassoulet, and it's a very famous French dish. Are you gonna have it? Yes, I think so. It's like beans and sausages and duck and stuff. Bonjour. Ça va? Ah. Ah. Jeremy. Food has arrived. What are we eating? We're eating a, a pear and goat cheese tart with a side salad. And what have we here? Cassoulet, which is a, a French stew, which is traditionally uh, pork sausage. And this one is a duck with beans. It's like a pork and bean stew, but it's famous in France. Well, that was a delicious meal. It was. Well, there's a fairly amazing mountain range that we seem to be in. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Twist up, twist up, there you go. There we are, no, it's, it's behind my other way, over. Uh, you're a bit rubbish at that old finger pointy thing, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was lovely. It was, um, it was funny actually. It was uh, obviously kind of parts of the city were the original buildings and, and features and whatnot. And then you can see, especially on the ramparts that there were definitely sections that were a little bit more uh, recent but you know as a whole if you look at it you can very much envisage what it was like hundreds of years ago and uh, very very impressive and the sun has kind of come out sorry babe I can't hold my arm out that you have to come around oh oh I see Nick's actually holding the camera for once well all I would say to you is that we came to the home of Cassoulet and if it had been 30 degrees today, we wouldn't have eaten cassoulet, we'd have had a salad. I just want to say that I don't think Carcassonne is actually the home of cassoulet. It's almost the home of cassoulet. The actual home of cassoulet. In fact, listen, if you look at that medieval mural there, they're quite clearly preparing cassoulet, eating cassoulet, and then fighting there's, for cassoulet. they're fighting for cassoulet, and there's something else, the crusade for cassoulet. Oh, I found something interesting. How's your arm going? Can you hold it up a little bit longer? Uh, quick, <laughs> quickly. <laughs> I'm getting the shakes. I, I am. <laughs> Hurry up. I like to cast it up. Just kidding. <laughs> Come on, get on with it. Come no, on. No, I can't. Tell me. I'll do it in a voiceover. I, I don't feel like I have... All... Okay, all right, I'll tell you now. In the 13th century... I'm getting the droop. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> It's not my hands, that's what I do. Okay. So in the 13th century, yes. the, um, Carcassonne, the, the walled city of Carcassonne, up on the hill that we've just been to. In the city of hey, Carcassonne. Hang on, can you just get a shot of this lovely street? Because it's absolutely beautiful. We, babe, we went down this street earlier twice and filmed it both ways. No, but it's nice in the sunshine. Hang on a minute. Film me again. Okay. All right, two glasses of wine, Vandaloo. So, in the 13th century... Take the camera. Oh. So in the 13th century, Carcassonne was inhabited by Cathars. So Catharsisism was a religion that was apparently Christian in nature, but the Catholic Church was like, uh, uh this isn't Catholic, this isn't Christian, we're not happy with this. Anyone who knows a little bit about European history will know about the Crusades. They were basically uh, a very dark time in the Catholic Church where the, uh, the Pope kind of decided that they were going to eradicate any non-Catholics from Europe, much of Europe. 
and beyond actually. As part of that, as part of the cr Crusades, uh, they actually sacked uh, Bézier and in the same military campaign they came to Carcassonne and they, they, uh, they sacked Car Carcassonne as well. So all of the Carthers were uh, basically eradicated. And what I didn't realize was that uh, it was the same campaign, the same army that sacked Bézier only weeks before they came to Carcassonne. Bézier was supposed to be defended by the military leader of this area and he, he fell back to defend Carcassonne instead and left Bézier basically open to the Crusaders. And um, every single man, woman and child was slaughtered in Bézier and the entire city was burned to the ground. That's what they did in the name of God back in the 13th century. So it was 20,000 inhabitants of Bézier and um, not a single person was left alive apparently. There you go. Interesting. Good morning everyone. It is a beautiful sunny morning here in Carcassonne and we are just waiting along with several other boats for the lock to open. We've got another eight minutes before the first lock of the day and uh, yeah I'm not sure if we're going to get in straight away. I think we're going to have to let our neighbours go through first. No, no, the Dutchman there has told them that we're going in first. Oh okay. We've just taken the Bimini off because we are going through the lowest bridge on the entire canal and uh, I think we will be fine but Nick is just a bit paranoid so the Bimini was the highest point of the boat especially at the sides. It's the sides, it's literally to do with the, the curve of the arc of that. Don't want to risk it. For the sake of what is essentially 15 minutes work to get that Bimini off. Yeah so yeah so the plan is as always I will get off first and I'll push the boat out are you going to spring off or are you just going to... No, bounce okay. thruster. Bounce uh, thruster. And then I'll, I have to cross quite a busy road. Well, you've got to push the nose out. That's, that's your job. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I'll run ahead and, and then I'll take the lines. Mm. So we're actually going slower than jogging pace, it would appear. 
which is a little bit surprising and also mildly depressing. We're doing four and a half knots. How many kilometers an hour is that? Seven and a half. Seven and a half k's an hour. The maximum is eight on the canal, by the way. But yeah. Yeah, seven k's an hour, yeah. That is not fast. So today we are um, back in the countryside, back amongst the vineyards, which is lovely. And this is a very beautiful uh, stretch of canal right here. We've got, oh, we've got a log. So this is our second lock of the day. Two of, I think about five or six. Lots of locks today, just for something different. According to my cal calculations, once we get around this little bend, we should be able to see the lock. Alright, gates are open. That's not a landing pontoon, by the way, that's blocked off. Go to port, go to port, go to port, go to port. All right. Ah, oh, this is where I get my exercise for the day. channel. <laughs> slowly my love, slowly. Well done babe. You got it there? All right. Yeah. Pull it in, Nick. Pull, pull yourself in. Merci, madame. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. Push back when the rain falls. We just want the sun down. Give up when it's too hot. You want me to jump off with a bow line? I think there's electricity pedestals and posts as well. You might, you might want to go further, four, because there's no electricity here. Four meters. Three, two, one. Is there a reason why I jumped off all the way over here? 
And that's us all tied up for another day. Got electricity, got some posts to tie up to. That's a good day. Get on track now.